Hello folks, Redneck Reloader here. Today I am going to hopefully make a short video, but I'm going to show you what you need to know about using the Lee Safety Powder Scale. This is a scale I use the majority of the time. I do have another one, but uh, I prefer the Lee. It seems to uh, work um, faster, um, which I'll show you as we get into this what I'm talking about. So I usually keep my scale in the box in the drawer. I don't keep it out all the time because where I work out here in my shed, um, you know, there's no heat uh, unless I'm out here and I turn on a heater and there's no air conditioning and it's dirty and you get a lot of dust and stuff. So I keep it boxed up until I need it and I just pull it out. So when you pull out of the box, it, it, there's three pieces. There's the uh, base and the beam itself and then the pan and you just have to assemble the three pieces. So the pan, there's a little bar back here on the back of the lifter beam, and it just hooks over that and hangs on there. And then there's a sharp, like, uh, razor blade knife edge in there, if you can see it. And that is the balance point, and it sits on this groove in the base. So you just... and. Take note of this metal flag up here, because I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. But that sits down inside this groove here. So you just set it there so that knife groove is in there. Then you can move this from side to side. It's got some play in it. So I'm going to show you this. You can move it like this, side to side. And you want it pretty much centered. And the reason why is that flag... There's magnets inside here that act on this flag to slow it down when it's oscillating. And you don't want it too far to the side or it'll drag on that magnet. Same way the other side, if it's slid to the back, it'll slide and it'll slide on that magnet and hit it. So you want it in between, kind of floating between them. Um, it sounds kind of complicated, but it's really easy. I can just kind of feel it. So when I put this in here, I just kind of, Put my fingers on each side like this and I can slide it back and forth and I can just kind of find the center part and make sure it's centered and then I just move it up and down and make sure it's not dragging anywhere so the first thing you have to do is set the zero and zero the scale out and the way the adjustments work on this scales is a ball bearing and it moves in these slots I can get my focus in and you can see those go from 0 to 9 to 100. Those are 10 grains. So if you were going to do 20 grains, you would put it on 20. You know, pretty simple. So to 0, you're going to put it on the 0 detent. Then you have to set the slider bar back here. And the Lee scale is different than any other one I've ever seen. I don't think anybody else does one like this. Um, there's a... There's a pin right here that locks. Let me see if I can show you. You push it in like this. And it... I can see this is going to be a challenging one to film. Push it in. And it locks like that. It clicks in. And that locks that slider bar. So to move the slider bar, you push that pin from the back. You push it out like this. And that unlocks it. And then you can slide it. The window down here where it says grains is literally how many grains? So zero, one, two, up to ten. Okay. Then the top window is tenths of a grain. And the way this top window works is when you're sliding, you should be able to see three of those faint lines. And with the uh, one line being darker than the other two being faint, that's when you've got your adjustment. So just for an example, I'm going to be loading here a little bit, and I'm going to be setting this to 3.9 grains. So what I'll do is I'll slide it until the 3 is in the grains window. And right now, if you look, you can see a heavy line on... You can actually see three lines. You can see one on the 9, one on the 0... And one on the one. That actually means it's right at three grains. So the zero is the middle line. 
and the one and the nine are the one on each side, if that makes sense. So if I move it just a hair over to one grain, it'll look like that. You can see that nine line disappears and the one shows up on the zero. So you've got a heavy, bold line on the one and a faint line on either side of it. That's one tenth of a grain. So you move on to two and you can see you get the idea. So I'm going to set this at 3.9. So I'm going to put this in the, the three in the window down below. And then I'm going to move those lines out until I get to the nine. And you can see I've got a line on the eight, a line on the nine, and a line on the zero. So that's 3.9. So now the trick is to lock it. So... I get it set there and then I push that button in and I lock it. So now it's set at 3.9 and it's not going to move. And since I have this on the, the ball in the zero spot, that's set to 3.9. If I move the ball to the 10 spot, that would be set to 13.9. So that's how you set it. So I need to set this to zero in order to zero it out. So I, I pop out my lock. And I move it till the zeros in the grains window. And I want to set this so that the 9 and the 1 have faint lines and the 0 has a heavier line. And like that. So now that is zeroed. And I push in the button to lock it. And that's it. Now, this is literally the way that I set this. Because when, I'm, when I have it sitting down on my table, I can't see those little lines. Now, if you had it up on a shelf for its eye level and you were close to it, you might be able to see it, but I can't. So uh, this is the way I use it is I'll pick the beam up, hold it up to my eyes and I'll set it. So this is very good scale if you're, let's say, weighing powder and you, you're going to set it at 3.9 and you want to leave it there while you weigh your charges. What it's not good for is if I have this case and I want to weigh this and see how much it weighs. Because then I have to put it in the pan and slide that slider and get it balanced right. Then I got to try to read the slider. And you can't really take it off and do it then. So the scale is good for what it's intended to do is weighing powder charges out. But for some of the other weighing tasks, it's not the best. And uh, I use my other scale for that. So now I've got it set at zero. And I have to hang the pan on it. And you see it just came up there and moved. And then it just stopped. That's not what should happen. So when I put it back on, I didn't center it. So it's hanging on those magnets. So I need to move it a little bit to get it in the center. Then, if I bump it, you'll see it oscillate, which is what you want. Now it's moving freely. And when the scale is on, these two pointers right here come together. I'll bring those up close and show you. So, when this, the weight is on, those two, the tips of those two pointers will come together like that. And that's what we're looking for to zero. So... It usually settles pretty quickly. Now see that the pointer for the beam is a little bit below this pointer. It's close, but it's a little on the low side. So what we need is more weight on this end in order to balance that out and get it to zero. And the way we accomplish that is, I'm going to take the beam back off and show you again. Um, behind this part of the beam is this screw and you can see it's got a spring to keep it tight so that uh, um, it doesn't turn by itself and all you got to do is turn this knob so if I turn it towards me like that um, that will move this piece of brass this direction and shift more weight to the back and lift the nose of that up so that's how we adjust that so when it's on here, and I put my pan on, and I make sure it's moving freely, and I give it a second to balance. It 
And see, I actually bumped that a little bit when I was playing with it. So now it's going the other way. Let me move in a little closer so you can see. So now we're, the beam's a little high. I need to bring it down just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is turn this just a touch. And I mean just a little bit. And then I like to give it a little bump and let it move freely so it settles. And one thing about a scale like this, it won't tolerate any kind of drafts at all. Um, when I'm out here in my shed reloading, I've got to wait until it's not windy at all. To, before I do it, because just the wind outside blowing will change the pressure in here enough that it'll move around. Because I've got gaps between my wall boards and stuff where you can get breezes in here. Well, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. It's pretty much dead on. So now the scale is zeroed. So now I'm getting ready, as I said earlier, I'm going to reload some tight group and I need, my charge is going to be 3.9. So now that I have it, um, so now I have it zeroed, I'm going to set my charge. So I'm going to push that button out to unlock it. And I'm going to slide this over until I see three grains down here. And then I'm going to go the tenths of a grain and watch that go up. I want it to 3.9, which will mean I've got a good heavy line in the 9, I've got a faint line in the 8, and I've got a faint line in the 0. So that is, right there, that is 3.9 grains. So I'm going to push my button to lock it. And now I have it set. Make sure that the ball is in 0. And now I just reassemble it, put it back, the beam back on, put on my pan. Make sure it's moving freely. Okay, now I'm ready to weigh out my loads. Now I've got my scale all set to 3.9 grains. And now I'm going to go ahead and weigh out uh, some loads. So uh, I'm using the lead dipper today. And this is a 0.3 cc dipper, which should give me 3.5 grains of tight group. Just a little bit less than what I need. So I'm going to go ahead and dump this on the pan. And you'll see the scale start to move up a little bit. But it doesn't quite come up to the right level there. So I'm going to have to add a little bit more powder. So at this point, you would just trickle some in. I'm just using my dipper and tapping it. And then a little bit of powder at a time. Until I get it up to the charge I need. Pretty close, just a little low. Tap in another just flake or two. Got carried away a little, a little too far, so now I gotta take some back out. And this usually goes a little smoother than this. I'm trying to work around the camera to do this, so it's a little awkward. But once you get the hang of this, you can weigh these out fairly quickly. That looks pretty good right there. Got it up to the next, got it up to the right level, so we're done. So that's all there is to it. So that's the uh, the Lee Safety Scale and how to use it. Uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe my videos. Uh, it helps me a ton. Uh, thank you all and God bless.